Dear brothers and sisters, today's first gospel reading from the Holy Evangelist Matthew depicts for us a very important scene, especially for today. Here we have the disciples on a ship in the middle of the sea, the Sea of Galilee. And indeed, this body of water is quite large. And if you were to sail it just on a simple wooden ship, especially in the middle of the night, amidst all kinds of waves and wind and storms, truly a frightful scene. Even though on this boat there were fishermen, Peter, for example. They were all filled with fear. And lo and behold, they see a figure walking on the water. And they at first thought it was a spirit. And their fear was even magnified. They had no idea what, what to think, how to explain this phenomenon. It was hard enough to deal with the difficulties of this storm. And then to add on to that, something that was beyond their imagination, their expectation, something that they could not explain. And in the midst of all of this confusion and fear, Jesus says to them, be of good cheer. It is I, do not be afraid. And Peter was first to recognize and ask that if it was truly him that command that I come out and meet thee on the water. And Jesus says, come. And Peter stepped out of the boat. Would we step out of a boat in the middle of the night with no life preserver? while the waves are crashing against a very flimsy wooden boat? Probably not. We would hang on to dear life, to what we had, this flimsy boat. But Jesus was offering something much more powerful. He was offering His power. He was offering His grace. And Peter recognized this, and he stepped out of the boat, and he walked on water. He had faith and hope. He trusted completely in God. But that faith and that hope and that trust began to weaken when his human reasoning started to click in, and he saw the waves and the wind and he was probably thinking to himself, what am I doing? It's hard for us to imagine what it's like to walk on water. Impossible for us. Maybe if we water skied, we'd have somewhat of an indication of what it's like to actually be on top of the water. But human reasoning explains how that's possible but just to simply walk on water is beyond human logic, but not beyond the power of God. And so his reasoning became stronger and weakened his faith, and he began to sink. But his first reaction was to cry out, Lord, save me. And the Lord reached down grabbed him by the arm, and put him back into the boat. So important for us, brothers and sisters, to understand the, the importance of faith and hope. St. Theophan the Recluse tells us that faith and hope leads to strong virtue and is the basis of a God-pleasing life. But we have to live according to that faith and hope. 
for it to be God-pleasing. And the more we live according to faith and hope, the more we rely on God's grace and His power. But He warns us that as soon as our faith and hope weaken, then our human fears and human reasonings start to take command. And it is hard for us then to do many God-pleasing things. And we become paralyzed by fear. Sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? So many of us are paralyzed by fear because of this virus. Yes, we have medical advances. Science is struggling to understand this virus and struggling to find a cure. But so many people don't run to God in the midst of this dilemma. We see this virus and we can't understand it. Maybe in a similar way as many unbelievers look upon the various miracles of God and can't understand and discount them. And here, in the midst of the virus, we rely solely on human understanding. And we understand how limited we are. But we Orthodox Christians also strive to lead a life with faith and hope. We are called out of the boat. Many times in life, we are called to walk on water. We are called to do what's impossible. Maybe not always connected to physical health, but to give of ourselves beyond our strength. To be patient when it's far beyond our ability to be understanding and merciful when we ourselves are racked by uncertainty and confusion. To pray fervently, trusting completely in God. We are called to walk on water when we are asked to do things far beyond our own strength. Every parent understands this in times of difficulty. Married couples understand this when they go through trials and tribulations, when they are asked to give far more than they ever expected, when their marriage demands for them far more than they ever planned to. Many of us experience various times in our life when we are faced with impossible tasks. And we have to face them with faith and hope. Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. Ask and it will be answered. Open and it, knock and it will be opened. Seek and you will find. Jesus always promised to fulfill our prayers, to hear us when we come to Him with faith and hope. But we have to come to Him in the same way as St. Peter did today. We have to leave the boat, figuratively speaking. We have to lead, leave our own human understanding. We have to leave the limitations of our own human logic. We have to leave our own self to become selfless. We have to leave our pride and run to our Lord with humility. And we have to knowingly face 
our difficulties, trusting in God's mercy. And in that way, we lead, leave from the boat, figuratively speaking, and we trust in God's mercy and compassion. Saint Pantalaemon, the passion bearer and healer who worked many miracles, shows us how to do just this. He lived at a time in Nicomedia when the world was in raging hatred against Christians. The beginning of the fourth century was a time when rivers of blood flowed from those pagans who despised Christ and who killed anyone who confessed to be a Christian. St. Pantalaemon studied with the holy higher martyr Irmalaius, a priest in Nicodemia, secretly, and began to learn about Christianity, though he was a pagan. And one day he saw a young child who was bitten by a snake and was dying. And St. Pantaleon prayed to our Lord Jesus Christ and said, if you are the true God, heal this young child and I will be baptized and believe. St. Pantaleon prayed this with all his heart and the child was healed and the snake was destroyed. And St. Pantaleon was baptized and took the name Pantaleon. In childhood, he was Pantaleon, which means all-powerful. But Pantaleon means all-merciful. And so, having received holy baptism, he also received grace to perform many miracles. He was a physician and he would heal many people, tend to their needs for free of charge. Not tens, but hundreds of people throughout Nicomedia. And his reputation began to grow so much that the local physicians were jealous because when anyone ever got sick, they would not run to the normal physicians, but would run to St. Pantaleon. And so they complained to the emperor and he called Pantaleon and Pantaleon confessed himself as a Christian. And that was the start of many horrible tortures. Pantaleon even cured a paralytic in front of the ruler and the ruler out of rage and anger killed the man who was paralyzed and who was healed and began the torture. St. Pantaleon tore at his flesh with hooks, threw him in boiling oil, all kinds of imaginable tortures. Even just one of them would cause him to die. But every night when they would throw him back into prison, our Lord will appear, would appear to him and heal him. And this, of course, would enrage the rulers even more. Finally, St. Pantaleon was beheaded to silence him. And many others in Nicomedia. In Irmalaius, Irmipas, and Irmagratas, those who were contemporaries of St. Pantaleon, Irmalaius, the one who taught Pantaleon about Christianity, they too, the day before, were martyred. St. Pantaleon displayed great faith. He was presented with impossible tasks. He was asked to live in a time that was enraged against Christianity, against truth. He was raised, he was raised and lived in a time when human logic was the master. And anything that would defy logic, they would seek to destroy. St. Pantaleon, the All-Merciful, is known and loved by many, many Christians throughout the world. 
Many miracles continuously are performed by his holy intercessions to our Lord Jesus Christ. People were healed from all kinds of sicknesses, sorrow and distress, illnesses of soul and body. Again, all of this defies human logic. When these miracles are performed, medicine can't explain. We've all heard of these occasions when someone with stage four cancer is suddenly and unexplainedly just healed and returns back to normal life. We hear how marriages are miraculously restored and love and truth reign. We hear how children return to their, their, their families and are restored in whole. There are many miracles that are performed through the intercessions of St. Pantaleon. And we run to him especially now in the midst of this pandemic that our Lord will heal us, not just physically heal us, but spiritually heal us so that we may live a life of faith and hope, that we may trust in him wholeheartedly, that we may change our lives and not return to the lives of ungodliness that we had before this pandemic, that this chastening by our Lord will correct us and open our eyes and inspire us to change. That's when true healing takes place. It's not just when we are released from that which afflicts us, but true healing takes place when having been delivered, we change our life and we love God and run to Him more faithfully. So let us, brothers and sisters, not fear. Let us not be fearful. But if we have to step out of the boat, let us do so, trusting in God. For with God, all things are possible. And yes, deliverance from this pandemic, deliverance from any personal sorrow and distress and infirmity is possible if we run to our Lord with faith. With God, all things are possible. And he will give us the strength to even figuratively walk on water. O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, through the prayers of the Holy Passion Bearer and great martyr Pantaleon, heal us, grant us health of soul and body, strengthen our faith, so that we, by following thy commandments, may love thee all the days of our life and find eternal rest and joy and true life in thy heavenly kingdom. Amen.